Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I am fucking focused. That's good. I'm sweaty like gorilla balls right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you go out skateboarding in the middle of the summer in Colorado, you old ass man. <laughs> I did. It, uh, it's my birthday today. So me and Bella went to the sporting goods shop, bought some skateboards, spent the whole day skateboarding. And I know my back's going to be hating me tomorrow for it. <laughs> yeah. I went through that last month. Yep. You have no idea what you're in for. I don't think. <laughs> well, I did some stretches beforehand. I, I uh, hopefully will be doing some stretches in the morning and, and uh, avoiding most of it. But that is not what we're going to be talking about today. What do we got on the agenda for today's podcast? Mm, let's talk about underutilized assets. Underutilized assets. So what does that mean exactly? Well, if you're good at what you do and you has yourself a business, there's probably lots of things that um, you've created. There's probably lots of things that you have asset wise that you don't even realize you've got. Um, we all have we all have assets that we're not utilizing correctly, and most of us are continually trying to add new assets to our business, to our team. People try and go out and get more leads, more clients. And instead of focusing on the things that they've got and actually making them better or even utilizing them, like, let me give you an idea. There's a term that marketers are using when they're talking about their clients called trash can assets. Not a lot of people have heard that term. Some of us that have been in the business for a while have. It's an asset that you've got that's being totally underutilized. And there is an entire marketplace of marketers who are stepping into businesses and grabbing up those assets and doing the doing on your behalf to make you money and they get some. Because we've all got assets we're not utilizing. Some of the assets that we've got, we're not utilizing at all. And that's, um, I think there's a gap in the marketplace for people who actually have a business that are trying to build out a new funnel or they're trying to add on a back end or they're trying to grow and scale and build a team and pay traffic and all of that shit. There's so many areas that you could shore up your business and actually work less and put less on your plate by utilizing those assets. Most people just don't even know that they've got them. So that's what we're going to talk about. So I have a problem where, and I've, I've noticed this about myself, where I build a particular asset out. I say, okay, I'm going to create this lead magnet and I'm going to create this uh, follow-up offer for it. And I'm going to create an email sequence and then I get it done. And then I'm like, oh, that was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. And I'm, thank God it's done and I'm on to the next thing now. And then I don't want to look back at it. And then maybe six months down the line, I'm like, oh, I probably should have tweaked that or I should probably go back and look at that. But do I want to go backward or do I want to go forward? And I think the constant moving forward might have something to do with myself forgetting and underutilizing assets. And uh, maybe other people are suffering from this. First of all, does that make any sense to you? And what are your thoughts on that? It does make sense. And like, that's just one type of asset, right? Let's look at it this way. You've got an asset catalog, right? And in that asset catalog, there are products, there are services, there are connections that you can make, connections that you've got, clients, right? We all have assets within our clientele that are completely underutilized, myself included. This is why this is one of the things that we're talking about today is I'm, I'm refocusing and to, be, to, to put a fine point on that, um, here's the way I see what you just described. 
I naturally expand, 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 and I go, fuck all this, and I contract, right? And I cut all the bullshit out that I can, and I go, what is the most important thing that I need to be focused on, and what is the most important thing that's going to move my business in the direction that I want, right? Expand, expand, expand. We had tools, we had time, we had people, and pretty soon we're like, fuck, man, I'm like, I've got a full-time job and change just managing this thing, let alone doing the thing. And many of us are, are built like that. Um, Nick Peterson mentioned this in a way that I've heard it before, kind of, but the way he said it to me and the way he, uh, in a conversation, he explained it to me, there's three different main types of people who start businesses. Visionaries, implementers, and operators. Well, what you just described is visionary. I'm going to create this thing. I'm going to go do all the shit. And I'm going to do it. It's done. Next. Right? So you've got assets that are being underutilized because there are aspects to getting those assets utilized that you're not really, that's not your jam. You can do some of those things. You're probably pretty good at some of those things, but you don't want to do those things. You're a creator. You want to go create more shit, right? I did that thing. Now I'm bored. I'm in the middle of doing that right now, right? What we need in our world are implementers and operators. And I say we because I'm a visionary. I can implement. I can operate. But those aren't my Legos. Those aren't my crayons. Those aren't my paint set, right? What I want to do is I want to go talk about this other new thing. And that's expansion. But while we expand, we leave all of these amazing assets to kind of just either sit on the shelf and collect dust or worse, rot on the vine. Mm -hmm. Right? So the second part of your question was, do I, I think you said, um, do I agree with that? And what are my thoughts on that? My thoughts are you're being 30% effective at best. My thoughts are that you're spending 60% or more of your time doing activities that are actually not ROI positive based against the assets that you've already got because they're not being utilized. If you had somebody that was able to utilize those assets, if you could figure out a way to put those assets in a stream and automate it, if you were able to delegate 15 to 20 minutes a day, three days a week to focusing on those assets. They're already done. They're already created, right? You went through all the process to create those assets and there they are just sitting there not doing shit. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to implement and operate against those. But if you're good at what you do, you've probably got assets that you know are underutilized and you probably have assets you don't even know you've got. So I'm going to approach this from a marketing point of view, and then I want you to take what I say and convert it into a client point of view, if you don't mind. Um, it feels like for me, for both Podcast Blast Off and for Copy and Funnels, I had to do that. I had to say, okay, I'm going to try this, and then I'm going to try this, and then I'm going to see how this works, and then kind of uh, see what I got the responses back from it and then say, okay, I liked how this worked, but I didn't like how this worked. So I'm going to change that. And now for both podcast blast off and for copy and funnels, I have some pretty solid, um, like three and four piece sales funnels that are constantly generating leads and constantly converting people to a, to an initial offer. And then some people onto a higher end offer, but it took me a lot of, um, I, I guess it took me a lot of dating to figure out what I wanted to get married to. And I'm not sure that I could have decided what I wanted to get married to without doing all of that dating first. So how does, I guess, first of all, am I correct in my assumption? And then second of all, how does that apply to the client getting game? From my perspective, you are correct in your assumption. I would have never known what it was I wanted to spend my time doing unless I did a bunch of different things with my time, right? We do that in every area of our life. Um, the friends that we hang out with, 
right? We probably, every one of us can look back 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago and, and look at the people that we had as friends and go, yeah, there were some initial qualities that I was attracted to and some of those people that still hold true with the people that I'm now friends with, but there's a lot of other things that are below the surface that are totally different, right? We can probably look at our hobby, our hobbies, right? You mentioned skateboarding earlier. You used to skateboard a lot. You don't skateboard very often anymore. You've got other hobbies, right? You had to try a bunch of different things to figure out what it was that you wanted to do. Well, the same's true with with marketing stuff. You got to try a bunch of different things to really understand your market. Sometimes people get lucky right out of the gate and they kind of land on the thing, but then they hone it and hone it and hone it and hone it and it just gets better and better and better. Most of us jump into a market, whether it's as a salesperson or a business owner or a marketer, and we go, I think that's it. And we go try it. Side note, for all of you that are listening to the podcast that are in any of my courses, classes, master classes, coaching, whatever, check this out. The vast majority of us, right, we have an idea because we've got our own perception of what it is. And we have to jump in and test it. If you don't continue to test and adjust and test and adjust and test and adjust and test and adjust and test some more and then adjust some more, you're never going to get there wherever you think there is. And that's what I see a lot of people not doing. And that comes right smack down to the heart of what we're talking about. Underutilized assets. You had a reason to believe what you thought when you did that. You tried a little bit but you didn't really give it a full, a full shake, right? You didn't really do all you could. And part of that's because so many of us go too wide instead of go deep. And this is just another way to say it. Fucking get focused, right? There's 19 different things that I can do and 18 of them make money and two of them make really good money with very little time and they are super rewarding but I always constantly catch myself doing these other 13, 14, 15 things that, eh, right? We all do it. Um, I think the second part of your question is, is how, do, how do I tie that into sales and client acquisition? Cool. You went and got a client and then you went and got another client and then you went and got another client and you're stuck in this loop of going and getting new clients. Rad. Do you know how much money people leave on the table when they just constantly do that? Go get new clients and go get new clients, go get new clients. And they don't focus on the people that are already their clients. Right? I mean, like I broke down the numbers a week or 10 days ago on my own business. 80% of the people that bought a course of ours over a thousand dollars have bought three more things on average and they're all at that next or the next or the next phase of our business. I don't need a thousand clients. I literally, I need a couple of hundred, right? And I don't think enough people think that way. Also, I think this has been my experience at least. Um, you don't really know which kind of clients you want to actually marry unless you go through that one thing that you always told me is you have to have those conversations. You have to get out there and kind of say, this is what I think I want and then test it. And if it ends up being what you wanted, figure out how to get more of it. And if there's things that show up that were not what you were expecting, um, then you, I guess, kind of test and adjust from there. Yeah. Um, you got to be willing to go first and you've got to be willing to make mistakes, but then you've got to be intelligent enough to learn from your mistakes. Right. I mean, we could be talking about intimate partners. We could be talking about driving a car. We could be talking about raising kids. We could be talking about getting high. We could be talking about owning a business, getting clients, doing sales, making money, like all of it. There's so many things that once you do the thing, now there's these other consequences because of it. And some of those consequences are amazing and some of them are terrifying, right? But it's, it's like the whole being a virgin until you're married thing. 
awesome. That works for some people. There's no fucking way I'd have been able to make it. Like that just wouldn't have worked right in a, in a multitude of different ways. And we, as people, my, my belief is, is that we grow and evolve and we change over time. And what was awesome 15 years ago is not. And boy, when you're married with kids, that can suck in not a good way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So jump in with both feet and learn and learn and learn and keep swinging. Client acquisition is no different. I just, man, I was another, here's another side note. I was watching one of the people that's been in my world for a while posting stuff on Facebook a couple of days ago. And I just kept thinking to myself, missing the point, missing the point, missing the point, missing the point. There's no fucking shortcuts. Like there just aren't any, there's no shortcuts. That's why they're called shortcuts, right? It's not the whole thing. And you're either playing to win the long game or you're, or you're not playing well to win the short game. And it's just a race to the bottom in so many different ways. Oh, life is a trip. <laughs> it is. So I'm going to kind of focus you at the end of the episode here. Focus, uh, you fact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned, I think it was maybe before we got on air, about expanding and expanding and expanding and then getting to a point where you said, oh, wait, I need to narrow down what I'm doing. I'm, I'm reaching too wide right now. And that's what I've had to do uh, in both of my side businesses. Um, it got to the point where, especially in Podcast Blast Off, I had like 15 different lead magnets. And I said, which is, which is the one that's converting the best? And which is the one that's um, actually bringing in people that are the most qualified for what we offer? And so I cut every lead magnet except for that one. And running my marketing from that point on has been so much easier and so much more fulfilling and, and uh, a way better use of my advertising dollars. Um, when it comes to clients, say you've been doing the client getting thing and you've got 15 clients now and uh, three of them are your perfect ones. And you know that if you weren't dealing with the other 12, you could dedicate more to those three and, and really hit it out the park for them but you've got 12 people that are already signed up. How do you handle that situation? Ooh, there's not just a three word answer reply to that, but there is a, a concept and that concept is genius zone. In my world, you've been through that, right? So we identify what your genius zone is and we go about client creation. So we begin to focus on those three clients and having conversations around how to do more, deeper, better, longer, right? With them. And then the other 12 clients, we begin to pre-frame and future pace them for my business is beginning to evolve. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing with you for a period of time, but I want you to know this is where I'm heading. And I don't know that that's the right fit for us. I don't know if that's the right fit for you. I'm going to do this until I'm able to hand off what I do to somebody that's as competent or more competent than I am. And I'm going to make introductions. I'm going to find my replacement. That way I don't leave you hanging. Right. That's the super short in a nutshell. Here's the concept on how to do that. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do that. I've got my own, I've got my own specific ways that I do that. I've, I've gone through trainings and teachings where other people kind of walk through something similar. Um, but you always want to leave people better than when they found you. Yeah. And I think that as we close up here, I think that that unloading process or that letting people go process can be just as scary and intimidating as the going and getting new clients process can be. Most people actually fear that they, they think that, um, well, let's just say this. I've seen a lot of people just kind of like get quiet and quiet and quiet and quiet and then like they've abandoned those those clients and that doesn't work very well either. On the other hand, there are some cases where that's required. It's kind of like don't go away mad, just go away, right? 
the way you let go of a, a really scary girlfriend who could really like screw up your world in your twenties is you just begin to like a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. Right. Instead of trying to go in there and dump water on a grease fire. Yeah. <laughs> nice analogy. Okay, Landon, this has been a fascinating episode and I really like, I like some of the stuff that we got into because I think it's, it's uh, some stuff for the more higher level um, stuff that maybe people that are a little bit a little bit further along the path needed to hear um, than some of the stuff that we've usually covered. If people want to check out more of the podcast, where can they go? Salesgorillapodcast.com, of course. All right, sweet. Until next time, man, we will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts.